Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Gribs Hunden. During the summer of 1495, King John of Denmark's flagship called the Gribs Hunden sank while on its way to Sweden. The vessel remained at the bottom of the sea for over 500 years until divers came across it by accident in the 1970s. Nobody realized it was a big deal, and archaeologists didn't investigate the shipwreck until the year 2000. Shortly after the initial investigation, the ship became famous worldwide because of a monstrous dragon that was brought up from the wreckage. Archaeologists managed to salvage the wooden figurehead of a serpentine beast. The figurehead was on the stern of the 15th century ship when it crashed. The dragon-like monster is now the only artifact of its kind in the whole world. However, the discoveries didn't stop there. More recently, archaeologists searching the ruins of the shipwreck came across a barrel with the skeleton of a monster inside. It was a shocking find, because it truly looked like a monster skeleton was deposited in an old wooden barrel. It was about 7 feet long and was subsequently taken to Lund University in Sweden for testing. DNA analysis revealed the monster was in fact an Atlantic sturgeon. The giant fish was likely going to be presented to Sten Sture the Elder when King John made his claim to the throne of Sweden. But when the ship sank, the monster fish, which was supposed to be a kind of offering, was lost. And now for number 9, but first it's shout out time! I want to say a big thank you to Ekara Wolf and Patricia Green for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries. Number 9. The Lost City of the Ocean A lost city has been discovered deep in the Atlantic Ocean. Near the summit of a massive underwater mountain, not far from the mid-Atlantic ridge, there is a rugged landscape of towers and turrets rising out from the gloom. In the light of the remotely operated vehicle, which was sent to explore this underwater abyss, the columns of stone appear ghostly blue. Some of the towers are nearly 200 feet tall, while others are no bigger than toadstools. The submerged city, a natural landscape of stone and hydrothermal vents, was discovered 2,300 feet beneath the surface. Scientists stumbled across it about 20 years ago, and nothing like it has ever been found since. This underwater playground has been around for at least 120,000 years, perhaps even longer. It's a hydrothermal field being fed from heat far beneath the floor of the ocean. The heat leaks out through cracks and fissures, while the volcanic activity far below releases methane and other dissolved gases. These gases react to seawater, creating the towers of the city. Even with basically no oxygen, the hydrothermal field is a hotspot for life. The gases spilling from the cracks reach temperatures of about 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The extreme environment is teeming with life, and creatures like hungry crabs, eels, shrimp, and sea urchins call this place home. The hydrothermal field is also rich in hydrocarbons produced by chemical reactions on the sea floor. According to microbiologist William Brazelton, the area is a perfect example of an ecosystem that could exist in our own solar system, specifically on Jupiter's moon Europa or possibly even Mars. What do you think? Let me know in the comments! Number 8. The Giant Phantom Jellyfish The giant phantom jellyfish was discovered for the first time in 1910. Since then, there have been fewer than 130 sightings of the mysterious deep-sea creature. But in early 2022, guests on a submersible had the rare privilege of seeing one of these otherworldly animals moving through the water in front of them. The massive jellyfish looks like a living UFO, with its bell shaped like a spaceship and its ribbons streaming out 30 feet behind it. The sighting was a huge shock because the submersible was only at a depth of around 260 feet. Usually, the giant phantom jellyfish lives at depths of over 20,000 feet. That's in such a deep part of the ocean that scientists barely know what's going on down there. Weirdly enough, the phantom jellyfish has been seen in every ocean on the planet except the Arctic Ocean, meaning the Earth's oceans are likely teeming with them. However, the jellyfish are so elusive that hardly anybody ever sees them. Because of the rarity of the giant phantom jellyfish, 
Scientists know very little about their anatomy. But Daniel Moore, one of the chief scientists on the expedition that recently spotted the jellyfish, has a theory. He believes the phantom jellyfish live in the deep ocean, but occasionally come to the surface to get access to sunlight. It might be exposing itself to ultraviolet radiation as a means to burn away parasites. Number 7. An Ancient Fishing Weir Something truly amazing has been discovered off the coast of Alaska. The remains of a stone fish weir has just been identified, and it was built roughly 11,000 years ago. The fish weir, an ancient tool used by Native Americans for catching fish, was uncovered over a mile from the shore under 170 feet of water. A fishing weir was an ingenious piece of early technology. Many of the first people to live in Alaska used these traps to gather a sustainable and seemingly endless supply of fish. The structure was fairly simple in its design. It consisted of either five or six semi-circular stacks of rock, with each one measuring about six feet wide. When fish swam into these semicircles, they got stuck. Then, when the tide rolled out, the fish could easily be picked out of the weirs since they couldn't swim away. It was basically like collecting fish in a barrel. Rosita Worrell from the Sea Alaska Heritage Institute says the discovery of such a sophisticated piece of technology shows the great antiquity of Native Americans in Alaska. Rosita says it also shows that Native people learned everything they could about the behavior of salmon, specifically their migration behavior. The Natives then developed the necessary technology to catch as many fish as they needed to feed themselves. Number 6. Volcano Fish a recent expedition to map a mysterious section of the Indian Ocean revealed a terrifying volcano fish. Researchers went on an expedition for 35 days around the Cocos Islands, located near Sumatra. The islands are at the center of the Cocos Islands Marine Park, a protected area of over 180,000 square miles. Since the area had never been mapped before, Researchers with the museum's Victoria Research Institute took it upon themselves to complete the mission. However, as they were mapping, they uncovered some things they hadn't anticipated, like underwater mountain peaks, bizarre examples of marine life, and dormant volcanoes. One of the most shocking discoveries was a blind eel that was previously unknown to science. These eels were found living in one of the planet's most extreme environments. The blind eel was discovered approximately 3.1 miles beneath the surface. But scientists also found some other strange creatures, like an array of tribute spiderfish. These wacky creatures have elongated fins that make them look like they're wearing stilts. Their fins allow them to hover above the ocean floor and catch crustaceans as they swim by. The team also found pelican eels, which have loosely hinged jaws and look like monsters as well as the Sloan's Viperfish, with its glowing organs and teeth like pale sewing needles. Number 5. Lake Superior Shipwreck On May 4, 1891, disaster struck Lake Superior. The SS Atlanta had its mass broken by the intense winds and subsequently began to take on water due to the damage. The ship was extraordinarily heavy because it was filled with coal. The seven crew members on board scrambled into the lifeboats and desperately rowed to shore, but only two of them made it. It was a tragic day for everyone involved, and the SS Atlanta was never seen again. At least, not until now. Over 100 years later, the SS Atlanta was discovered by researchers as they mapped over 2,500 miles of Lake Superior. The vessel was submerged 650 feet beneath the surface, near Deer Park, Michigan. The ship was located after it was spotted on sonar. The team didn't initially investigate any further, but they came back later with a remotely operated underwater vehicle. They sent the vehicle down to the bottom of the lake where they found the ship with its name still clearly spelled out along its side. The video footage taken of the wreckage corroborated the details given by the two survivors in 1891. Using the ROV, Researchers were able to identify the three broken masts that came off during the brutal storm that sent the SS Atlanta to its watery grave. Number 4. Underwater Ruins In 2006, archaeologists conducted an underwater investigation in China's Fuxian Lake, 
which is located in the Yunnan province. They uncovered the remains of ancient buildings at the bottom of the lake, huge pieces of architecture left behind by civilized human beings. Historical records show there was a city by the name of Yu Yuan established in the area around 206 BC. Then, between the Sui and Tang dynasties from 589 to 907, all historical records ceased. The city was around for about 700 to 1100 years, then all mention of it completely vanished. Local legend says Yu Yuan City sank to the bottom of the lake. The expeditions in 2006 revealed real stone ruins of what was almost certainly a huge city. Sonar surveys have even shown an architectural complex at the bottom of the lake covering roughly 10.8 billion square feet. There is clearly a huge city submerged here, and yet its historical records are scant at best. One of the structures found under the lake even resembles a pyramid. The city under the lake is one of the most impressive sunken settlements in the world, but it's barely been touched by scientists. There was a recent expedition that recovered stone artifacts from the underwater site, but little else has been done, and the whole place is still a huge mystery. Some experts have speculated the ruins could be over 1,800 years old, leaving scientists baffled as to how the city was built. For that matter, we don't even know how the city was flooded. The most confusing thing is how scientists have largely ignored the site. It's as if they have no interest in revealing the secrets of a lost civilization in China, one we have real physical proof of. Could there be a reason they haven't explored the site in greater detail? Let me know your theories in the comments. Number 3. Sunken Roman Ruins the coastal Italian town of Ponza was a Roman port city that controlled the Tyrrhenian Sea 2,000 years ago. It started out as a small colony and quickly became an integral piece of the Roman Empire. It was often used for exiling powerful Romans who had done something terrible but couldn't be killed because they were too powerful. For example, Nero Caesar was sent here, Caligula's older brother, as well as Nero's mom, Agrippina the Younger. However, Ponza wasn't all that terrible of a place to be exiled. It was something like an imperial resort, with grand villas and all the luxuries a disgraced Roman emperor could hope for. Ponza even had fish farms. During the first few decades of the Roman Empire, a series of caves were cut into the rock near the main villa. These were underwater fish farms used to ensure the Roman elite visiting the villa had a constant supply of their favorite food eels, lobsters, and mullet. Recently, underwater archaeologists attempted to study the ancient rock-cut caves. As they searched the area around the submerged caverns, known as Grotte di Pilato, they uncovered architectural slabs. These were pieces of a structure, one that crumbled thousands of years ago and fell into the water. On one of these slabs, a decorative motif of a flower woman was found and was dated back to the 1st century BC. This was even before the Roman Empire, in the final days of the Roman Republic. Researchers believe these architectural slabs came from a villa that crumbled due to erosion. The villa was built too close to the sea, and the eroding shoreline caused it to collapse. The few pieces remaining of whatever fell into the sea are now scattered near the abandoned fish farms. Number 2 the Newport Ship In 2022, an oak ship that sank 550 years ago was discovered in the River Usk near Newport, Wales. Archaeologists hailed it as one of the most significant archaeological discoveries in the UK's recent history. But the shipwreck wasn't found fully intact. It was in pieces, and archaeologists have been working tirelessly to put those pieces together. It's turned into one of the world's most complicated puzzles. The ship was built between 1460 and 1483, originally measuring 98 feet long and weighing roughly 400 tons. It was called the Newport Ship, and it sailed for roughly 10 years before being sunk on purpose. The vessel is now in about 2,500 individual pieces, all of which have been dried and restored and workers are about to put it back together. Archaeologists have compared the significance of the Newport ship to the Mary Rose, the flagship of King Henry VIII, which was discovered in 1982. 
The Newport ship was a trading vessel and the only one of its class that's ever been found. It likely wasn't equipped with guns or defenses, but was simply for moving cargo from one place to another. It took a lot of work to get the pieces of the ship out of the ocean, and it's going to take an estimated five years to put them all back together. Best puzzle ever. Number one, sunken Tennessee. Tennessee is known for its beautiful lakes. But what a lot of people don't realize is that many lakes in Tennessee are holding secrets. There are entire flooded communities hidden throughout the state, many of them dating back to the 1930s. It all has to do with the natural geography of Tennessee. Rivers here have a history of flooding. In the early 20th century, this proved to be a huge problem. Floods frequently destroyed farms, washed away entire crops, and ruined people's homes. The U.S. government finally stepped in to help farmers by building dams to control the rampaging currents. But in order to build a dam, a reservoir must be created. And in several cases, the new lakes that were made by the reservoirs caused entire cities and villages to be submerged under hundreds of feet of water. One of these towns was Loyston, which was established around 1800 by the Stooksbury family. The first people arrived in the early 19th century as pilgrims in the New World. By 1866, the town was known as Lois Cross Road, but in 1894, it was changed to Loyston. It wasn't a big place, though, and in 1935, there were only 70 residents. However, it was still a lively community. When the Norris Dam was built in 1936, most people didn't want to leave because their families had been there for generations. But they didn't have a choice, and everyone was kicked out eventually. The whole town was forcibly moved, and their homes were subsequently flooded. The ruins of these settlements are still underneath what locals call the Loyston Sea. Thanks for watching! Would you be brave enough to explore the ruins of a deep sea shipwreck or a sunken city? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and give this video a thumbs up for more! See you next time! Bye!